Hello, everybody. My name is Antonio, and we are so excited to have you with us here on the Rock Life Podcast. Uh, this is our Sermon Rewind. We are going through Rock Life, and uh, we are just going through matters of our life, different topics, different subjects. I am so <coughs> excited about our topic for today. We are talking about employment, our job, our work, and it's a really fun topic. I know we've been talking before we got on camera about this because there's so much to unpack and the message was amazing pastor dan i do have to say that thank you uh, and so we are excited as if you are watching you might notice a little bit different here we have some microphones we saw some of the comments about maybe the volume or the quality of the sound for you so we wanted to make sure to give you the best quality possible and if you're just listening on podcast well you don't know you can't see. Well, maybe they're getting better sound. You're probably getting better sound. Because so. actually, you sound better in my ears right now. It does than sound good. Last time. Yeah, and you sound super smooth, Pastor Dan. Oh, I, I thought that. I sounded worse. That's I really don't know. cool. You feel like I sound like you could be like a radio DJ. This is K- yeah. KROQ. I, I love it. Well, I that's love. already a station, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be K Rock. That's right. That's right. K, are they the ones right off the freeway or is that K Cal? That's a different one. Uh, I know 96.7 KCAL okay. Rocks is over there, yeah, Classic and KSGN's over there. This is a little bit of a segue, but I, it's funny because what was classic when we were growing up it's funny because then the what was pop when we were growing up is now on the classic it's stations. Terrible. It's and terrible. It's like, oh, well, yeah. I'm like, I remember when remind. that song came out. <laughs> and it's on the classic stations. Yeah, yeah. It used to be my dad saying that. Now yeah. it's me, and I'm like, this is wrong. Yeah, no. It, it, and I, now I know how my dad felt. I was like, oh, this is oldies, and it's like, what he grew up on. Yeah. 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 No, um, one of my kids, this is totally off topic, but they were just like, yeah, we're going to go to this concert with this band. And I'm like, oh, geez, that used to be my favorite, you know? And I, I, I was in some ways a little bit like, well, why don't I get to come, you yeah. know? But anyways. no, that, that is, that is funny. I mean, Hey, aging gracefully, uh, pastor Dan, uh, again, sermon rewind, but we were talking about work, but Hey, what were some of your favorite job? I mean, you've had probably several jobs yeah. over the years. Yeah. What were some of them? Maybe some of the weirdest, most bizarre? Uh, oh, geez. B- bizarre? I'm not sure if I've had a bizarre job. Um, I mean, I've done some stuff in construction that I would consider bizarre, yeah. you know, crawling yeah. under houses. And uh, I remember actually Mike and Sue Bryan's house. Oh, nice. I crawled under their house. Yeah, they wow. were doing a, um, a, a addition on the back of their house. And so we were doing electrical and uh, so I crawled under their house, and they had just put down the floors, and so they had glued down the backer board that went over the the you know the wood, yeah. and the wood had little gaps in it, so the glue had gotten all down on the ground. Wow! And here I'm crawling underneath the house because I'm running electrical lines from you know one plug to the next one and things like that, and I'm feeding them up to the electrician. And I remember coming out from underneath their house covered in glue, right, from head to toe. It was what just kind of what kind of glue? It was for the for the board that laid the um, like construction was, glue. Yeah, like oh, okay. like backer board that you put oh, tile yeah, on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, like the yeah. concrete board and stuff like that. They glued that to the wood that was uh, just kind of the the base flooring. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't like plywood. It was like slats because the house was uh, old. Yeah. And so that it had gaps in it. And yeah. so here they are putting the the backer board down so that they could put the tile on top of that. Mm-hmm. But that backer board with the glue underneath it, the glue seeped through those those lines in the wood. Yeah. And so as I'm crawling under the house, oh. I'm literally claw- crawling through all this glue, <laughs> running the electrical lines. Yeah. And, I, and I mean, I'm... Yeah. I'm not the biggest guy, so uh, on the construction side, I was yeah. probably the skinniest dude there. So they're like, you're going under the house, yeah. you know? <laughs> so I'm doing the monkey crawl underneath yeah. it, but I came out literally. Oh, I was wearing God. sweats, and I had a, a flannel on, I remember. Oh, my. And head to toe, glue. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, I had to do stuff like that. I, I, I had a job cleaning pools. Okay. And uh, bizarre, you talk about yeah. bizarre. I mean, it was always crazy to open up the filter and find like a dead mouse oh, or a bird, like yeah. a live bird. Oh, wow. Sitting in the yeah, filter yeah, yeah. waiting to be released, you know. So that's the thing that uh, is like flush with Yeah, the, the skimmer. So the, the water's coming off and yeah. then all the leaves and stuff is supposed to go in there. Well, yeah. anything that fell in there and died. So lizards, rats, mice. I mean, I did from uh, Moreno Valley all the way through uh, Lake Paris area, oh, you yeah. know, down there. And then up into Morongo. Nice. We'd go onto the Indian Reservation yeah. and clean some pools. Oh, cool. And so I'd find lizards and stuff up there, you know. Yeah. And uh, out Beaumont Banning, we cleaned some pools out there. But yeah, one time I opened it up and there was a, a live bird sitting in there, all wet. Wow. Looking like what just happened, you know? And you open it, does it fly out right away? It didn't or? fly out right away. I think oh. he was a little stunned. I think oh, like wow. the, the, the light was hitting his eyes and may yeah. have been adjusting, like, and just sitting there, like, man, that was terrible. You know, that was a 
uh, awful moment in my life. Wow. And um, and so I just kind of like was like, whoa, you know, so I picked up the basket and he just kind of sat on the ground next to me while I did my job. And then yeah. eventually he, he kind of flew away. So you've done quite uh, some manual labor jobs because you've oh. also done I know you talked about you've done lawn, you mowed lawns. Yeah. So my first job was actually yeah. mowing my grandma's lawn, 50 okay. bucks a, w- a nice. month. Nice. A month. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, I talked about that when I was talking about fasting because, yeah, yeah. yeah, my grandma was like, feed him something. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I did that. I, I, uh, I changed oil. Okay. For Walmart. That's right. That's right. Tire and Lube Express Center. Um, and that was, I mean, you talk about head to toe. I was yeah. covered in grease. You know what I mean? So, uh, I remember one time you, you're supposed to wear safety goggles. I was wearing safety goggles and I popped the, the, nut off the bottom of the, the yeah. oil pan, you know, yeah. and it, it falls down and there's a grate. So it falls on the grate and then the oil comes in there. Hot oil splashed over my glasses and onto my eye. Um, so if you've ever seen those wash stations yeah. where you, they've got oh, the, the little, little do, like frog, I yeah. literally had to go and wash my eyes. Out, yeah. You know, so I never thought I'd use that. Yeah. In a million years. No, I feel like in high school we had inappropriate names for that little thing in science hmm. classes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, can we edit that? <laughs> <laughs> Like the Sorry, bidet. It's just like really, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. It's just, yeah. That's the ticket. I think this this headphone is just making it's just, it makes it really casual <laughs> for me. Yeah, just, it, maybe that's what it is. Little, I guess it's just the guys, you know. But hey, <laughs> you're here with us too. But we are excited. Speaking, I know I've had some crazy jobs. One of the I was sharing with you, Pastor Dan. I think one of the most interesting ones was uh, I used to I would um, umpire or ref. I would do different sports for this company that provided referees. And um, we would just uh, on we weren't properly trained on the rules. They w- we would just get sent out to go to these things. <laughs> and so we'd make calls the best we could. But these pa- and this was rec ball. This is not club. This is not travel ball that we were- this was rec ball. But these parents of eight, and nine year olds, I'll tell you, um, they were not they wouldn't be happy and they would let you know well, oh, how yeah. they felt for sure. And over a, a call, you know, whether it be out of bounds, whether it be foul ball. Um, I'll be at the sport. I, I one specific incident we was out in Canyon Lake, and so Canyon Lake, you know, you know if you're yeah. from Canyon Lake, you know. We love you. <laughs> um, so they really l- let us know, and my friend who was, I was just the the, like I don't even know what to call. It. That's how he knows I shouldn't have been doing this job. But I was think I was the l- line umpire. I was the on the bases. He was behind home plate. And he ended up kicking out like so many people because they were just going out and like, you're out of here. You're out. And we were 20s, you know, in our early 20s. So it just was kind of cool. Just you're out of here. Get out. And felt like a boss. Yeah, it right? really felt yeah, cool because you're you're here. the guy. You're, yeah. I mean, that you're the top guy. They're not going to undermine you. Did anybody kick dirt on you? Oh, no. Like, uh, yeah, that like the, you know, you've seen those I, videos, you right? Know where I mean, if you're going to be a ref, <laughs> you might as well have dirt kicked yeah, on no, you. Yeah, you, no, you, uh, you know, I got some cuss words thrown out at us but yeah well should we get on topic pastor dan i mean it was not totally off topic i mean we're kind of on topic yeah we're talking about uh work and its value and again you did a great job hitting some of these things home um maybe just off the bat we'll go with the question that we often ask what didn't make it to the from the notes to the mic or what maybe didn't quite make it to the notes because but you were like, man, I know I could spend some time here. Well, it's interesting because we're going into, in the next coming weeks, finance. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that has to do with your work. Right. And so some of the things that I, I stayed away from because I knew I was going to hit them mm-hmm. in the finance series was yeah. things like hard work pays off. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's modern English kind of terminology. But if you look biblically, like um, I'm in a chronological study Bible this yeah. year. And um, I was in uh, the part of uh, Kings with Solomon. And now it's going through the Proverbs of Solomon. And in reading that, I'm just like, oh, man, look at all these verses about hard work. Uh, you know, and, and it's obviously a compare and contrast when it talks about the wisdom of hard work and things like that. It's contrasting it with the lazy man and his desires and how they come to nothing. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't get a chance to really center in on how much hard work does for us. Yeah. That if we're just diligent, that we'll prosper. You know, the diligent hand shall be made rich. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's numerous scriptures, and, and um, you know, we, we didn't have time to camp out on that. Right, yeah, that's good. Um, you know, we, we started to talk about work ethic on, as a broad, general mm-hmm. topic, but to center in on some of those more intricate details of, of things like, you know, staying on task or um, even even when the, your boss asks you to do something outside 
of maybe your job description. You yeah. know, there's this this attitude that we've often heard, well, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you're getting paid by an employer to do a job and they ask you to do something, as long as it's not sin, go do it. You know right. what I mean? Like if, right. it's, if it's not immoral, if it's not uh, dishonest, you know, I, I mean, if they ask you to evade taxes, yeah. the answer is no, yeah. obviously, right? Yeah. And, um, and then I would go look for another job because if, if that's the character of the people mm -hmm. that you're working for, you know, um, then, then you may want to go find somebody, someone else to work for. Right. Um, now, there's no perfect employer. Um, but I mean, uh, we, we had an instructor in Bible calls that used to say it this way. If, if they ask you to go pick daisies for eight hours a day, go pick daisies. Right. What do you care? You're getting paid. Yeah. You agreed to do a certain job for a certain number of hours. And if they decide, Hey, we want you to do this, then go do it. You know, if they right. ask you, Hey, can you go clean the bathroom? We've got some guests coming through and you know, we're down on our custodial staff. That may be humbling, Yeah. but go do it. Yeah. Right. You know, I think that's the thing is, is that if you're just diligent, um, you know, and if you just work as unto the Lord, I mean, if God asked us to do it, we'd do it. Mm -hmm. I, I would hope. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't yeah, tell God right. that's not my job, you right. know, but where, where is the description on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And I, and I think that's the thing is, is that, um, you know, if, if a boss especially knows that they can trust an employee, mm -hmm. then they're going to go to them. You know, I think that's, that's the part that is not talked about when mm. we talk about getting away with the little bit is pot with the least possible yeah is when you become a reliant employee well who do you think is next up for either a promotion or a different opportunity sure because you're well hey the scripture sounds like it sounds like scripture but you know trusted with the little i mean you can be trusted with much right um, there may be an employee that was there longer yeah and they get passed up because someone else comes in right diligent mm -hmm. right showing and that they're wi willing yeah yeah and attitude has a part to play in that i mean if a boss has someone that has a very terse attitude where they're mm -hmm. not willing and they drag their feet and yeah. that sort of thing and everything's uh you know pulling teeth just to get them to do something and then they have a new employee that comes in with a good attitude yeah i'll do that yeah who are they going to choose right the one that is easier to work with yeah. you know and then well i've been here for 12 years why didn't they promote me because they don't like you yeah well pastor and one of the, the challenges that I'm seeing again, I read different articles and seeing different things, whether it be social media or or just studies that are coming out. Uh, and, and I think it's very important for our listeners, for those watching to realize that we are talking about doing things the godly way, doing right. things the way as believers should. And just because there is a push in society to normalize a lot of things uh, and, and that word even normalize could be triggering because it's become such a buzzword because normalize this, normalize that. And there, it, it, whether it be because it became an employee's market versus an employer's market, yeah. right? Because there's more uh, jobs that need to be filled. So you can kind of be employees. It's kind of like the housing market, right? If sure. there's more houses, then it becomes what? Is that a buyer's market? Or if there's less ho houses, it becomes a seller's market, right? And the yeah. same thing with the jobs and meaning the demands got to be more as employees, and what the world did, what society did, was start to put out all this information that is actually contrary to the Word of God. But it sounded really good to our flesh. So sure. what happens is when we hear the truth now of the Word, it becomes so challenging to our flesh because society has normalized things like don't do extra, your boss needs to do this, and some of the things that you talked about yeah. on the weekend message. And so what I, the question I'm, I'm getting to um, is... As believers navigating through even what, what sounds right in terms of, you know, finding out, kind of getting some of that value, um, what are your, your thoughts on that? Again, out, outside of maybe even what you touched during the message, because I know you touched a lot of those important topics. Yeah, I think, um, you know, as, as far as what we're talking about, again, we're looking at it from a biblical perspective. Right. And, uh, you know, 2020... It did some crazy stuff to our society. Yeah. You talk about normalizing mm -hmm. things. Um, you know, one of the things that it did, it really pushed some jobs online. Yeah. To this day, I know people that still work online that started in 2020 yeah. out, of, out of necessity because yeah. that's all they could do was mm -hmm. be online because everybody was isolated and, and yeah. um, you know, quarantined and all that good stuff uh, that, that we did during that time. But then when it came time to reinsert into society, these companies said, hey, uh, we just realized that we can make more money 
less overhead. We don't yeah. have to have office spaces. We don't have to have employees coming in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have to pay people for certain areas that we used to. Now we can put that stuff online and we can get the same amount of work done yeah. without the, the overhead and without those costs that would have been if they were here using mm -hmm. up electricity, water, all that kind of stuff, you know, supplies and different things like that. Now they're, now they're home. They've got their laptop or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And, um, you know, that, that was, people are now working from the beach or working yeah. for the mountains or yeah. whatever state they want to work in. That's okay. You yeah. know what I mean? But what that also did was that that put it in certain people's mind that if they're not getting that sort of a work environment, then, then, you know, they're going to go and find something that did that. Right. And in some ways I think that it, it, brought down things like labor. I mean, people are built to work, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and the Bible talks about working with your hands, that which is good. Um, that doesn't mean that every job has to be some sort of a, a, a manual labor or something right. like that. However, there are people that are never going to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, there are people that are built to work in the trades. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Bible talks about skilled craftsmen that yeah. are anointed by God to do that. Right. And we're finding that the trade schools and, uh, you know, some of these areas that, that need laborers yeah. are lacking because everybody wants to kind of write their own ticket, right. if you will. Right. And, you know, I, I, I tell you, I don't know how some people are making it. Mm -hmm. It's like it, in, in the world that I grew up in yeah. and, and lived in and, and kind of matured into, I never saw that type of a thing where we could kind of write our own ticket. But today's market. Yeah. People are writing their own ticket. Yeah. And, and, and my mind goes back to, well, wait, okay, so the employees in the driver's seat, they're the ones that are, mm -hmm. you know, because I was at the car wash the other day. Yeah. And they still had the sign up, the whole world is short staffed. Please be kind to those who did show up for work today. <laughs> right, right. You know? <laughs> and and that, that, that pains me to see yeah. that there's not a young person right. that can go wash a car. Right. You know what I mean? Like to talk about these stories, like changing the oil and doing all the random yeah, yeah, yeah. jobs I mean, and tasks. There, there used to be a thing about paying your dues. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and it seems like people are wanting to come out of high school or college or, you know, whatever, yeah. when they come into the workforce and just want to go straight to a management position or something right. like that. But I think that's where, you know, especially the scriptures we read this week and remember you have a master yeah. in heaven. Right. And it likens yes. it to the masters we have here on the earth, the employers. Yeah. And whether you're an employer or an employee, remember that you're working for God, yeah. number one. Number two, uh, to provide for necessary things, mm -hmm. right? And and that's where we said enablement. Um, some people have worked the systems of this world in mm -hmm. order to be enabled right. to be lazy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just plain and simple, whether that's a, a family relationship or that that's a relationship with assistance or aid mm -hmm. that's available to them. Um, people have found a ways to, and, and like water, they'll take the path of least resistance. Right, right. Now, some people have been diligent online to work hard, to prosper right. and to make great money. And they are living a great life because right. they've they've figured out, hey, if I work hard at this, mm -hmm. I can make tons of money. Yeah. And go buy a house in another state and yeah. work wherever I want to work. And yeah. man, more power to you if you can right. do that. Right. There's books about the four hour work week and there's books about how to, you know, not have to work again, but still. But all, all of that, obviously, there's the the context is that they have built something that sure. you worked hard initially to maybe put things into automation style. Yeah. And I don't think that's what we're talking about. No. I think one of the things that comes to mind is a, a contribution to our society to society you know not yeah. that we don't we work unto the lord and as we work unto him he would have us uh, he, you know he designed this society these ebbs and flows within uh, you know i i was reading this book uh, about business secrets from the bible and it had talked about how you know you won't see a jewish person mowing their lawn and obviously he was being he was just kind of throwing out an example uh on on a Saturday or, or a weekend, because if, if that's not their job, right. Right. If it, outside of their job, because they believe in, I do my job and I allow other people to do their job. If I mowed my lawn, then I take away work from the lawnmower mm -hmm. or from the landscaper and, and their business. And because they know that there's, there's this natural things that society needs to contribute to each other. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, could I change my oil or could I fix the plumbing? Well, that's, I'm, I'm taking from other people's jobs sure. and tasks. And so it's just, it, it was a mentality to me that switched over, but also recognized 
uh, you know, again, COVID did a lot of things. And I, I hate to reference four years ago. But we're still seeing the well, that repercussions. that was an epoch moment. The world right. changed. And you talk about normalizing. Right. We, we are living in uh, what some people hated at the time, but a new normal. Yes. You know, it, it's like a trauma victim. You know, afterwards, they want to be the same person they were before. But right. something happened to you. Yeah. You're different. Yes. And the workforce is different, uh, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Now, within that, the principles of God are timeless. They're unchanging. Thank you. Yep. And I think that's where when we take a look at things like, um, you know, there, there's been made mention of we, we talked about the employee being in the driver's seat. Yeah. Or, you know, people have said things like, I'm going to take my life back. Yeah. Now, I, I, I understand that, you know, you, you're responsible for your family. Mm -hmm. You're responsible for your future. You yeah. know, um, we should not rely on things like Social Security for our future retirement. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that those who store up little by little will will prosper. Yeah. You know, and that we should be saving up and looking to leave an inheritance to mm -hmm. our children and our children's children. Right. right. That's our responsibility. That's not our employers. That's yeah. not the government. That's yeah. not anybody else's responsibility. And so in those terms, I think, yeah, you should not take your life back. No one owns your life. But, right. You know, God. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then you're a steward of that life under God. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you should take ownership of your own. Mm -hmm. things that, yeah. that that pertain to your life but when it comes to if you're working for someone else yeah you you've committed and even if you signed a work agreement which all of us did right right you're, you're under covenant yeah and god takes that seriously so for us to rule over our boss yeah th there's an unjust scale there yeah right and and i think that's where when when we come in it says to be submissive mm -hmm. Right. That we submit ourselves to the vision of someone else. We're coming under the mission. Right. This company is trying to sell this product. This company is trying to serve these people. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever whatever the the emphasis of that company is. So therefore, I'm going to help aid them in their goal. Yeah. And accomplish their mission. Right. And, and, and that's my mission when I'm on the job. Yep. If if I'm the one that's dictating that, then why didn't I start the company? Yep. You know, things are yeah. out of order. Yeah. And God is a God of order, not chaos. Right. A cool story I saw in recent weeks uh, was that of a, a fast food employee. Uh, someone's recording this and they, you know, they come up to the fast food window and they told the employee, hey, if I give you $100,000 to walk away from your job right now, and I mean, they're showing them the money, uh, would you do it? And he, I would imagine some of him was like, maybe didn't believe him, but the response was what garnered so much attention. He was like, uh, yeah, no, I can't. I, it's just me and one other employee here, and I don't want to leave them. And um, and it circulated. Obviously, it went viral because he was being serious. He turned down the money uh, and decided to stay at his job because he wanted to do what you're just saying. There, there was the contract. There was, a, I have committed to doing this. I'm going to honor this. You know, whether I didn't give my two weeks or whatever, it'd be different. He was like, I'll do it if you give, you know, I'm not going to leave on the shift, right? Like that, yeah. you know, I'm not going to abandon post. Um, well, it got, it went viral. Someone saw it and was like, Hey, I'm going to give that guy $15,000. And then the company, uh, of which he was working caught wind of it. And they made it a big deal to, uh, reward him and, um, gave him some money as well. And again, based on that reward went to one of the big takeaways from the message for me was obviously working unto the Lord, but that word that you mentioned was our reward in that right yeah not just the the salary is what's due the wage is due right. to the worker right and yeah. and even you know now now i know we've we've centered a lot on the side of the employer right a, as far as uh employees submitting to them yeah. and fulfilling their mission god speaks very strong mm -hmm. to employers mm -hmm. um uh, i think of the book of james the wages of the employees that yeah. you held back yeah have now come up to the Lord of hosts. Mm. And and it's a very serious thing. And, you know, in the book of Proverbs, it says that if you have the money to pay your employees, yeah. don't withhold it to the next day. Right. Give it to them that day. Be yeah. diligent to pay a living wage, to give it to them in a timely fashion, yeah. um, you know, to, to not threaten them. Yeah. You better do this, otherwise you're right. fired. Yeah. You know, those sorts of things. That we're not threatening because we have a master in heaven, too. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all accountable and responsible. Yeah. And, you know, I, even in my leadership here at this church, um, you know, I may be pastor. I'm also an uh, employer. I'm mm -hmm. also the boss. Right. And so with that, um, you know, I've been criticized that I've been too kind to certain people. Right. Um, that I've given too much grace. That, you know, I put up with things and too long and th mm -hmm. this and that. Granted, yes, I did. <laughs> right. 
but but I did it in the fear of the Lord. Right. And I, and I know that uh, uh, certain things God had to deal with my heart. I like, hey, deal with this or I'll deal with you. And I was like, yes, sir. You right. know, but he's talking about me, guys. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we just threw <laughs> no i'm kidding but um <laughs> but you did it in the fear of the lord I, I did it in the fear of the lord because I, you know i i recognize that how i handle these employees mm -hmm. is is being watched yeah by my right. master my employer and and so god is my boss and god you've given me grace right. you've allowed me to make mistakes and do things and so i'm going to give that same grace and that that, right. that same ability to fail in a safe environment to my employees yeah and so that's where I think with, you know, when we look at those things, I'm, I'm glad that that, you know, on that video yeah, that yeah. his company came yeah. back and rewarded him because, you know, we're working for a wage, but loyalty yeah. like that yeah. should be rewarded. Yes. And in that case, the reward was a, a large sum of money. Right. In, in our case, when we look at to the reward from God, it's himself, like mm -hmm. we said in the message. It's, yeah. it's the well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. It's the blessing of God on our life. It's it's the wealth of God that comes into our life. Not just money in your pocket, but yeah. God making things work. Well, and I think that's the takeaway, Pastor Dan, for for the the practical that we, again, we we on this sermon rewind, we want to offer even more practical. The the message was very practical, but now some practical takeaways of some of the nuances from the message is that guys, it's not about just your 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 going to work and getting a wage. It's unto the lord mm -hmm. and who do we really trust because again we, i mean if if it's just about w us going to get what we can get and leveraging our positions and i'm going to work here for two uh two months to try to get an offer if we're just then we're doing the provision for ourselves right and we're not trusting god and we're not counting on or realizing that there's a reward greater than even finances can do sure right it's just about money Right. It's just about position or titles. And because but what we haven't touched on is what about if God called you to that workplace? Because there's people yeah. there that you need to minister to. Sure. There's people there that you need to show love to. But instead, you're instead we're being so cutthroat because we're just trying to climb a ladder that we're not even looking around us to see. You know, we, we've talked about one of the common prayers that we feel like I feel like we hear is like we pray for laborers, you know, or hey, such and such has a brother or a sibling or someone that they're believing for that lives in another state. Well, I pray for the laborers. Basically, I'm, I'm praying for the people on their job. I'm praying for the people in their city that they would be able to witness to them. How could they do that if, you, you know, if they're not being loving? If, the, if right. believers aren't being kind on their jobs, if believers aren't doing the right things on their jobs, but the, and you brought up this example, but they open their Bible at lunch break, but they've been, you know, kind of, hooking themselves up with extra fries or whatever it might be. I, I, I must confess, I used to take bagels. Well, I was allowed to take bagels at the end of the shift, but not during. <laughs> not during the shift, yeah. Um, but if, if if we're not what, doing... What job was that, by the way? I worked at a bagel shop. At a bagel yeah, shop. Yeah, at a bagel okay. shop, yeah. Nice. It was. I, I like that job. It was my first... That was my first, like, W-2 job. Whoa. Five seventy five an hour. That was the minimum wage then. Yeah. I rode my bike to that job. Wow. And rode my bike home. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to get you off. No, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But but you get what I'm saying? Like that Yeah, if you've been a poor employee, right. when you open your Bible, you're given a different story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I and I think if it's all about just the position, it's about the work, then we're missing it. Mm -hmm. We're missing it. Because we're spending our life there. And we can touch on work life balance. I know we talked about a little bit off camera. Yeah. Um but while we are there, it's more than just collecting a paycheck. And I think Again, those are some of the language that's being normalized. I'm just here to collect my check. I'm just here. But believers, we're not. Right. If that that's the language. OK, culture can have that language. Sure. Culture can normalize doing this. If if you you know, I saw, oh, if you expect me to speak in Spanish, you better raise that pay. Or if you expect me to do this, you better raise that well, pay. Let, let me say this. I, I do think, you know, when it comes to certain things like what you're touching on right now, there is a just scale. Yes. So, yeah, if an employee is bilingual. Right. There is a yes. There get, is a get some more money for it. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, I remember negotiating because I got an associate's degree. Yeah. In music. Yeah. When I went to the big box store that I worked at in Tulsa during Bible college, yeah. I remember sitting there across the and, and I mean we we're poor. <coughs> we we're we we're buying um you know top ramen at yeah. ten cents a pack. Yeah. 
you know, just to eat. And um, so we figured out every way to make Top Ramen. We, right. we joked about <laughs> making a book, A Thousand and One Ways to Make Top Ramen, you know, because uh, yeah. we were eating it all the time. But um, but I remember sitting across from the, the manager when I was getting ready to be hired on. Yeah. And so he's talking to me and this and that. And he tells me the, the rate of pay hourly. And I said, hey, I have an associate's degree. Does that count for anything? He goes, I'll give you 50 cents more. Right. I was so happy to yeah. have it. I was right. like, hey. yes, <laughs> right? Starving college student. Yeah. And then my wife came in and got a job. And he goes, yeah, she didn't have an associate's degree. <laughs> he goes, well, I gave you 50 cents more. I thought I might as well give her 50 cents more. And I was like, what? <laughs> but the fact that we're one and we're both, yeah. I was like, well, yeah, we'll bring it on. It. We yeah. need it. You know what I mean? Like that made a That's dollar to guess together, you know, so... So I think like if you have skills, you know, obviously the worker is deserving of his wage. The yeah. Bible says right. we, we need to pay people mm -hmm. for what they're worth. And, right. and that's different than I know my worth that yeah. I was kind of, right. you know. So it's not bad to negotiate. No. It's not bad to kind of bring show what skills you do yeah. have and kind of get the best offer you can get from a company. Sell yourself, but don't oversell yourself. Right. If you come in and say, and I'm going to be the best worker, you better be the best worker. You better right. back that up. Yeah. Right? If you if you say I'm bilingual, but you're you're yeah. speaking Spanglish. Yeah, right, right. It, it's not going to fly. You yeah. know, you, you better have it. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, if, if, if you have education or if you have experience, things like that, those are good things. Now, those are not the only things, though. Yeah. And, and I think that's where we're coming at this is, is that, you know, for us to come in and be in the driver's seat again. Now, doesn't mean you can't say, hey, you know what, uh, for this position, what I've seen uh, comparatively is, is our competitive wage here. Yeah. You know, you still have to take care of your family and financial needs. And so you're selecting because what are you doing? You're going to covenant with that company. And yeah. do you believe in the vision of the company? Is it just a job to make a paycheck? That's okay, too, because you have yeah. to make money. Yeah. And so if you go into it knowing I'm here to make money, and even though I'm not like, you know, sold out on the yeah. burger that I'm selling right, right. at the same time, I'm going to do this unto the Lord because yep. I do need to make money, but also, and this is what I think you were touching on. Vocation is ministry, right? Right. Yep. That's where we talk about full-time ministers. If everyone just worked at the church, where yeah. would the, the yes. salt and light be out there in this yes. world? Mm -hmm. We have to get in there and be laborers sent out into the harvest fields. Yep. The harvest fields at the burger place right. you know the harvest field is at the office yeah harvest field is at the government facility or the school system yeah the, the, we we need people right. from the church going out there and being salt and light in those areas to preserve the the community and the society but as well to be raised up by god for such a time as this right yeah let it be said of believers that they're the best employees not the worst. absolutely i feel like you guys have shared stories in, in just in messages about like oh, i don't want to hire a christian because you know they kind of come in entitled or they kind of come yeah. in and thinking oh, the, oh well i'm a christian i i'm just going to do this and i'm not going to put my best foot forward yeah uh, but speaking to christian business leaders or business leaders in general they want more christians they want believe or th there's a call that th they need believers yeah because of the effect that we can have just by loving people and doing yeah. if we act like believers if we act like if them. we act like believers which is what we're called to do and then there you go that going back to it Yes, there's the compensation, but there's also the eternal reward and the reward of God and his favor on our lives, which is way more important to me than a measly 50 cent race. Yeah. Right. I'd rather be in God's will because he's going to take care of me than sure. me going and doing my own thing. Uh, la last topic, Pastor Dan, we can kind of start to wind down. But we did uh, mention on that work life balance. What's, yeah. what's the thought there? Because the other side, I know there's there's workaholics because, you know, we're working sure. on to man and, you know, we don't want to or even if you're a business owner, like where is that? Work-life balance as believers. Well, you know, early in this year, we talked about the uh, the the seven sacred mm -hmm. disciplines. You know, yeah. and that's not the only seven, but uh, you know, we we chose seven that we yeah. talked about. One of them was rest. Right. And this is the biblical principle that God gave the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. Right. right? He made the Sabbath for us. It was a gift God gave to us, and you know, I had to learn to receive that gift personally it's good because i'm called to this yeah not only am i called to this i love this um i am i am energized by people so for me to be a pastor working with people it's like my bread and butter you know it's it's my my fuel mm -hmm. um i love the ministry i don't like the business side i don't like looking at budgets right. especially when you know right. expenses are exceeding income right you know those are those are things that i hate doing i hate uh, working with disciplinary things. No one likes to tell yeah. somebody you did a bad job or, right. you know, those things that we have to do. 
Um, you know, I don't like working with the facility and things like that. You know, I, I've, I've worked construction. I can do it. it it's not, you know, what, what energizes me. People energizes me. And so when I became a pastor, when I started working with people, and when I started realizing this, plus I love the word. Mm-hmm. So then even studying, yeah. uh, you know, preaching. Um, uh, a lot of people fear public speaking. For me, I don't have that fear. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, if you talk to certain people, they're like, if you don't have butterflies when you get up there, you're not going to be anointed and this and that. Well, I never have butterflies. I do have a healthy respect and fear of the Lord that that knows this is not of me. Yeah. I can't do this, but I, I, I enjoy the partnership with the Holy Spirit mm-hmm, yeah. of preaching, you know? And, and so that's something that, that is different for me in that sense. And so with all that, on my days off, I could be thinking about things. And, um, and then especially the, the, the ownership that I take and, and that my wife takes, her being a pastor's kid, knowing what it took to build this place. Yeah. And then as well, um, just us stepping up to the responsibility of continuing this great thing and stewarding this move of God, um, you know, it's easy on our days off to start by, hey, man, this week was just mm-hmm. a big week or a yeah. heavy week or, you know, those things, even the joyous things about it. Man, wasn't that a great church service yesterday? And then all of a sudden we're into, yeah, but, you know, we could do better at this. And then all of a sudden we're working. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? And it, and it can literally be, hey, wait, l- let me send an email real quick. Right, and then right. while I'm sending the email, oh, I've got all these requests. Oh, there's prayer requests. And now I'm, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it can really, it can literally swallow you up. And I'm grateful that I had a wife who was a pastor's kid because she would share with me, hey. Yeah. No, yeah, you're not going to go to that meeting. Yeah, you're not going to be there for that additional right. you know, thing. No, you're not going to uh, schedule an appointment after hours. Right. Um, we're going to take our days off. We're going to yeah. be with our kids. You know. And here's the thing too: when our kids are in school, mm-hmm. we don't have the same days off. I've right. got Monday, Tuesday off. They've got Saturday, Sunday off. Right. So to not have days off with your kids, it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. That means we had to be strategic. Mm-hmm. We had to be mindful. We had to be diligent yeah. about our time off, about vacations, about intentionality in the summers or, or yeah. holidays when they're out of school and we're off at mm-hmm. the same time. So, you know, that's that work-life balance that I think, you know, for someone that's working a nine to five Monday through Friday and, uh, you know, you've got a family that's certainly the priority. Number one is God, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and definitely your spiritual growth and your, your, your spiritual life is priority number one. Priority number two is, is that your marriage, if you're married, um, you know, and then your children Mm -hmm. come after your marriage. Yeah. Priority number three after that is your job. Yeah. Or your ministry. Yeah. And, uh, and if you're receiving your wage from your ministry, right? If you're not, then it's your job first, which is a ministry. Like you said, it's vocation. But then after that comes your ministry, right? you know, and so that when we prioritize those things, I think it'll give us that work life balance. And some people have made choices. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Some people have made the choice to make less money. Right. Uh, or even to like rent a house instead of own, mm-hmm. um, which there's definite advantages to owning and, yeah. and that sort of thing, building equity and all that kind of stuff and, and wealth that, that if you can get those things, do it. Right. Um, but, uh, some people have made the choice to rent or made the choice to make less yeah. money because they want a better work-life balance. Right. You know, they don't want to be consumed. Mm-hmm. And so they said, Hey, I'm going to back off that and make less yeah. money and do this. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. You right. know, especially if God's your priority and your family's your priority yeah. and you're able to provide for basic needs. Yeah. You know, um, I think, I think it's in the Proverbs where it says, Lord, don't let me get too rich that I forsake you or too poor that I curse yeah. you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, l- let me be in that sweet spot. Yeah. And that may be different for, for certain people. I mean, Abraham was vastly wealthy. Yep. You look at this guy, had 319 servants born in his own house, something like yeah. that, you know? That dude was rolling. Right. You know? Wealthy. Right. Uh, so much cattle and sheep and all that that him and his nephew couldn't even stay on the same plot of ground. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Right. That means he's, in our terms, filthy, stinking rich. Yeah. Yep. You know, God has no problem. And that's the father of faith. That's a friend of God. Right. So is God against us having wealth? Absolutely right. not. He's against wealth having us. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's where we, we have to say, okay, what am I doing? What's the purpose of my job? Mm-hmm. I'm obviously providing for needs, but hey, kingdom building. Yes. What, what's the purpose of this job? I, I've got people around me I can build. I've got wealth that I can now use to, to you know, like uh, the... the uh, proverb or why am i missing a parable oh yes of jesus where he talks about use wealth to win friends mm-hmm. so that when you fail you'll be welcomed into eternal yeah. dwellings <laughs> kind of a hard statement a hard saying of jesus but what's yeah. he saying he's saying use the wealth that you've accumulated right. 
to win people to Christ. Yeah. And, and when you die, you'll go to heaven. There's going to be a whole party going on there, welcoming you in of people right. that said, thank you for taking me to breakfast right. and having that conversation. Thank you for using your wealth to bless my, my child on their birthday. Right. Thank you, for because that was a witness to me. Mm-hmm. See, we're blessed. Why? To be a blessing. Yep. So we're getting ahead of ourselves in no, the that, finance series, that's too. Great. I mean, it's a purpose for wealth. Well, and th- Pastor Dan, we spend so many of our waking hours at our jobs. Yeah. And so it's worth and important for us to discuss, especially our heart condition while doing it, because you mm. can resent those hours, but nevertheless, they're passing and your life is passing. We need to redeem. And the so, hours. yeah, redeem. I love that. Redeem the hours. That's a redeem the time because the days are evil. Yeah. I think that's a good that's a good spot to stop, Pastor Dan. Let's do it. Awesome. Well, hey, we hope that you enjoyed your time. Share, like, subscribe, tell somebody, post it, a- ask your questions. We'd love to uh, hear them and help any way that we can. We love you guys. God bless you. Until we meet again. Yeah. By the way, those comments are great. Keep them rolling. Love yep. you guys. We'll love see you, guys. you in church.